Flying after diving. Should the recommendations be reviewed? By Peter de Noble, performed by Dr. Franz Cronier. A group of authors associated with Divers Alert Network Europe published the results of a new flying after diving study in March 2016. The results are intriguing and may lead some divers to wonder if it's time to revisit the flying after diving guidelines. The researchers conducted echocardiographic post-dive monitoring of gas bubbles in venous blood, in other words, venous gas emboli or VGE. The study was conducted over six days with 56 volunteer recreational divers. All the divers were apparently healthy and had no history of decompression sickness. Each diver did roughly 13 dives for a total of 726 dives in the study. The researchers monitored venous gas emboli after each dive at 30, 60 and 90 minutes after surfacing. Of the 56 divers, 23 almost never developed detectable bubbles. 17 divers bubbled occasionally and 16 divers produced bubbles every day after almost every dive. The dive profiles were monitored by dive computers and the average maximum depth was around 30 meters of seawater. The average dive duration was about 50 minutes and the ascent rates ranged from 9 to 18 meters per minute. Immediately before takeoff, 24 hours after the last dive ended, venous gas emboli were not detected in any of the subjects. After takeoff, though, bubbles were detected in the eight subjects of the bubbling group. In other words, those that bubbled every day after almost every dive, but none in the other two groups. At 90 minutes, all the subjects were bubble free. This was the first in flight study of real life dive exposures, and there are two important findings from it that divers should appreciate. First, there was great variability in post-dive bubble degree. And it's important to notice that the same divers seemed to consistently exhibit either low or high bubble production. While one can safely assume that the risk of decompression sickness is negligible without demonstrable venous gas bubbles, the risk of divers who do have bubbles is not exactly proportional to the bubble grade. At a low bubble grade, the risk may not be significantly different than for non-bubblers. In this study, although there were 16 divers who bubbled regularly, nobody developed any post-dive symptoms, nor did any of these divers have a history of previous decompression sickness. It's possible that deeper and longer dives may change the distinction between those who bubbled and those who did not. The second important finding of the study is that flying in a commercial aircraft, even after 24 hours surface interval, can produce bubbles in divers blood. The current guidelines for the kind of diving these volunteers did, which is multiple days and no decompression diving, recommends a minimum pre-flight surface interval of 18 hours. It's natural that there is a question whether the current recommendations need review. Consider these factors though. Venous gas emboli may lead to decompression sickness, but the risk is of concern only if the bubble grades are high. In this case, the highest level of bubbles detected during flight was so-called grade 3 on a scale of 0 to 5, and this was in only one diver. The Defense and Civil Institute for Environmental Medicine, DCIEM, and their decompression tables, which were based on bubble monitoring, are considered reasonably conservative and safe and they consider the dive profile safe if post-dive bubble levels don't exceed grade 2 in more than 50% of the tested dives. Based on that guideline, there is no reason to change the current recommendations. This study found venous gas emboli greater than grade 2 in only one out of 56 post-dive manned flights. It is important to note that the DCIM tables were tested using Doppler venous gas emboli detection, which uses a scale of 0 to 4. This study used echocardiography, in other words, visualization of bubbles 
not only the acoustic signals, with a grading scale of 0 to 5. So, grade 3 on this scale is not necessarily greater than the Doppler or the audio grade 2. Current guidelines recommend minimum pre-flight surface intervals before flying on commercial aircraft. To be on the safe side, it is always better to wait longer. This study has shown that a 24-hour interval is probably safe, but the 18-hour interval may deserve another look. We hope this group will continue their research and provide more data to increase our confidence in answering these important questions.